I was recently looking at which countries watch my videos the most, and it's not surprising that they're mostly big English-speaking countries. But it made me curious, which countries watch my videos the least? I had to export the data to a spreadsheet because YouTube won't even show you more than 50 results. And all the way at the bottom of the list, there are a few countries with zero views. Bahrain was just too expensive to fly to on short notice. Curaçao is technically part of the Netherlands. Guadalupe is technically part of France. That left just two countries, St. Kitts and Nevis and Grenada. And I went with Grenada because I feel like I just know less about it as a country and that would make the trip more interesting. But don't worry, St. Kitts, I got you next time. Wait, why am I saying that? No one there is watching this video. Well, anyway, I thought it would be fun to go to a country where nobody watches my videos and see if I could find anyone who plays Pokemon Go. So I hopped on a plane, flew 4,000 miles, and landed on a tiny island in the Caribbean with no idea what would happen next. Welcome to Grenada. Before I could even say, I need a taxi, this guy came up and asked if I needed a taxi. But before leaving the airport, he picked up one more passenger. No, actually? Yes. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> no way. Hold on, what's your name, dude? K-Pog. What's up? Nice to meet you. Yeah, I was actually set to start a plane for Go. Are you? Do you live here? No, I'm actually here for visiting my cousin. Okay, okay. That's so funny, dude. I, the reason that I came here is because I was looking through my analytics and no one here watches my videos. So I came here to see if I could find anyone playing Pokemon Go, and we literally just got in the taxi, and and I found one already. Well, if you ever come to New York, then we can talk. Right on, right on. But Kayvon didn't live in Grenada. He was just visiting for a wedding, and meeting him so early into my trip may have given me some false hope. I made it, I'm settled at my Airbnb. This is St. George's, the capital city of Grenada, and before I came here, before I chose to do this, I made sure to check Campfire um, to see if like Pokemon Go was even gonna be playable. Take a look at St. George's, there's a decent number of gyms. Same for like some of the other areas of the island over here. Plenty of gyms. So when I looked at the map on Campfire, I decided to stay in St. George's because there's a pretty decent spread of gyms and they're all kind of close together. It seemed like a pretty playable area for Pokemon Go. What I didn't look at was a topographical map that would have showed me that this area looks like this. So it's a beautiful, beautiful city. Um, but some of those gyms probably aren't gonna be super walkable. I'm gonna open up Pokemon Go for the first time since landing on the island and let's see what it looks like in game. Up the hill behind me, not a whole lot. Uh, gyms are looking pretty spread out now that I'm seeing them at scale in game. But right across there, uh, across the harbor here, looks like probably the best spot. And I do have a spawn point at the Airbnb, so I'll take an Eevee to start the adventure. Uh, maybe not. Bye, Eevee. <laughs> as much as I would love to just go to sleep right now, uh, I'm gonna put some sunscreen on, go out for a walk, and see what I can find, because I have a time limit here. It's about 4.30 Friday afternoon right now, and tomorrow at 2 p.m. is Community Day. I figure Community Day is a great day to try to find players, right? That's the whole point of it. So I wanna get out there and see if I can find anyone playing Pokemon Go today, so I can ask them, where do people normally play Community Day? Because it might not even be here in St. George's. So I've got less than 24 hours to figure out where the Pokemon Go community in Grenada plays Community Day, and also if the Pokemon Go community even exists. So I headed out for a walk to see what St. George's was like, and it turns out the answer is steep. My legs are gonna be sore by the end of this trip, or by the end of this day. <laughs> As usual, I'm sort of just wandering. Um, oh, but we have some regionals here. Maractus is one. Heracross is another that's gonna spawn here. Corsola as well. Uh, Pau style Oricorio. There's quite a few actually. But what I really wanna do is just check out these gyms and see how long people have been in them. Oh, that's recent, right? 27 minutes. Where's Risk Dash? Do I just start yelling Risk Dash? Probably not standing around anymore. I'm gonna go up this way. Seems like most of the gyms are red. Wow, only one person in this one. 
Dancer Frosh has been there for 11 hours. One person in each gym. What about this one? One person. Who is it? Dancer Frosh. Okay. So there is a little bit of activity over here, but I think on the other side of this hill is the cruise ship terminal. So that could just be tourists coming off of cruise ships for the day. The Pokemon Go map obviously doesn't do a very good job of explaining what's what, and I am now walking through a tunnel to the other side of the hill. I kept climbing up and down the hills, investigating the Pokemon Go landscape, and I came to a realization pretty quickly. So I've just been walking around, and my plan was to maybe try to find a spot where I could start a little lure party, like this triple lure right here. I thought if I put a bunch of lures on, if anyone's playing, they might see that and come to the lures. This is definitely the spot with the most lures clustered together, but it's just, I'm just on a street. It's not really like a plaza or anything. Um, I'm realizing that because the entire country is so hilly, uh, there's not really like a flat space here at least in St. George's. Nowhere that people could really just like hang out and play Pokemon Go, which obviously would contribute to the lack of a community. If there's nowhere that people can really just, you know, play casually um, and comfortably, then people probably aren't gonna play. I'm not giving up though, I'm gonna keep looking. I probably should have just put the lures down anyway, but the sun would be setting soon and I wanted to keep moving through the city to see if I could find a better spot. There's a little mall here um, at the cruise ship terminal and you know in a lot of tropical places uh, malls are usually a popular place to play pokemon go but i mean take a look there's one pokestop out there one gym out here so probably not happening here so i left the mall and started climbing yet another massive set of stairs i'm climbing another hill this time to check out fort george is that Fort George? There's a cannon at a Fort George. Well, daily visiting hours, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. I'm too late. Okay, wait a second. I'm, I was walking down the hill from Fort George and this gym just turned blue. Uh, Captain Otter, four minutes, four minutes ago, Captain Otter took this gym. With the expanded radius, Captain Otter could be anywhere. But I'm gonna go up and take it back and see if we can draw Captain Otter out. First, let me not get hit by a car here. Captain Otter, I'm taking your gym. I think that should do it. Zero CP, we knocked out Captain Otter. So let's see if Captain Otter decides to come put a Pokemon back in the gym. Captain Otter, I'm just gonna say it really loud, just in case. Captain Otter is within earshot. Um, I mean, I don't really see anyone. I'm gonna leave a Siglyph. You know, something that's like obviously out of place. Something that says, hey, someone's here. Well, I guess they get tourists all the time from the cruise ship, so maybe they've seen them before, but. Cruise ships, did I mention the, the cruise ships? I guess they're leaving, so. We'll see if Captain Otter has time to take the gym or if Captain Otter is getting back on the cruise ship and heading out. Captain Otter? Oh man, while I was watching the cruise ship leave just now, the gym started turning over again. And now Dancer Frosh has taken over all of, I already forgot your name, Otter, but Otter's gyms are all gone. Dancer Frosh has taken over all of them. But um, the last one that changed was this one way over here by where that triple stop was. So uh, I'm definitely behind. Dancer Frosh is nowhere near me right now, but my gym's safe because a raid started. I'll have this for at least another 38 minutes. The sun's set, it's gonna start getting dark. I decided to head back to make sure I could get water and some groceries, snacks and stuff before all the stores closed. So now I'm lugging this jug of water back up my hill. <sighs> I can see why no one's walking around playing Pokemon Go. Oh. After exploring St. George's, I knew there were at least two active players around, but I couldn't manage to find either of them in person. 
Oh my god, I overslept. It's 10 o'clock, which means community day starts in four hours. But to be fair, it's like 7 a.m. back home, and I basically didn't sleep on the flight last night. So <sighs> I definitely needed to catch up on sleep. Last night, Dancer Frosh took my gyms back. But there's no one else in any of these gyms. It's still just Dancer Frosh everywhere. Who's over here on these? Captain Otter. <laughs> Seems like the only two active players in all of St. George's. What about on this side? Captain Otter, no surprise. Okay, well, I'm gonna get up, I'm gonna find something for breakfast, and then figure out where I'm gonna go today. I realized my biggest mistake on day one was a lack of perspective. I kept judging areas as not great for Pokemon Go because they don't compare to other places that I've played in. But in doing that, I completely dismissed the fact that these actually are the best places for Dancer Frosh and Captain Otter to play Pokemon Go. I was looking for something familiar and comfortable, but that completely goes against the reason I came here in the first place. I wanted to push myself outside of my comfort zone. Often when I travel, it's for Pokemon Go events where I know what to expect, where I have others around to rely on. But what I wanted out of this trip was to be completely lost, to have no guide, to have no idea where I was going or how to get there. And to start day two, that's exactly what I got. Buses in Grenada are wild. For one, they're really just vans, and sometimes they'll have like 20 people crammed inside, music blasting, taking corners like a Formula One car. When you want to get off, you're supposed to knock on the roof and pay the conductor, but I didn't know that, so I ended up riding the entire bus route back to the start. This is where I got on initially. I've just done a full lap of the country. <laughs> Well, I finally made it here. It's 12.18, community day starts in less than two hours. I'm gonna take this gym, I'm gonna maybe, maybe put some lures down, and I'm gonna find something to eat because I haven't had breakfast yet. So I found a restaurant, had some banging fish tacos, and I went for a walk on the beach and forgot to turn my mic on. I was probably saying something about how much I hate walking in sand with shoes on. The beach was beautiful, but most of the gyms and Pokestops are a little further up from the water. I'm off the beach and I'm up into a park, but there's not a whole lot going on here. A couple people just sitting in the shade. Um, Cameroon Park at Grand Ants Beach. A little quiet. Not looking like the community day hotspot for Grenada. Still gonna get up here, leave my mark, take over the gym. Let's see who's in here. There are five, six, five people in the gym. I think I've seen King Cross in a gym before, but. I don't recognize the other names. Let's take it down, see if anyone shows up to take it back. I'm just standing around trying to look like a Pokemon Go player as much as possible. I got the Pokemon and the hundreds collab just so people know, you know, what I'm about, what I'm here for. Maybe someone will see the shirt and go, hey, are you playing Pokemon Go? That's it, it's my gym now. Let's see how long that lasts. I'm just gonna put shiny regionals in the gyms now. Here's my far-fetched. So I've got two gyms. There's two more gyms over here. Um, they're kind of spread out. There's a double Pokestop there. Maybe I could sit and lure that. I wasn't feeling too confident about finding players here, but then as I was taking down another gym, I saw it. A shining beacon in the parking lot. A bus to St. George's University. I'd seen the university on campfire, so I knew there were at least a few gyms there. And university campuses are usually great places to play Pokemon Go. So I hopped on the bus to find out if that held true in Grenada. Or at least I tried. When we pulled up to the school gate, a security guard started checking everyone's badges, and I obviously didn't have one, so I had to get off the bus. Hi. I'm just visiting. I didn't know that I need a... You're visiting? You're visiting? I'm just by myself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just on a, you know... On a vacation by myself, I just wanted to see what the school was like. But I didn't know it was a uh, private. Cool. Thank you. All right. Um, officially, a visitor at St. George's University. This was definitely the right decision. Look at this. A college campus is always a great place to play Pokemon Go. Four gyms. Um, I don't even know how many Pokestops, but they're lured up. There are people playing here, somewhere. Now it's just a matter of finding them. <sighs> Good choice, glad they let me in.
Just a few minutes later, I saw the telltale sign of a Pokemon Go player. A power bank cable running from phone to pocket. I swooped in to shoot my shot. Sorry, excuse me. This might be a weird question, but are you guys playing Pokemon Go? Yes. Are you actually? Oh my god. Hell yeah. Yes. I recognize you. No way. Yay. That's so funny. It's training nice. tips. Yeah, what's up? What's your name? That's, Trent. No Trent, way. nice to meet you. That's what's funny. up? That's I'm Jesse. Jesse, nice yeah. to meet you. Allie? Allie? Yeah. Nice to meet you. Well, there's what some guys, good what are you doing on here? this island. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. <laughs> <laughs> it's a funny story. Um, can I walk with you? Yeah, yeah of yeah, course. Yeah. Cool. So, it turns out St. George's University is an international school, and a lot of the students here are from the US and Canada. Trent, Jesse, and Allie took me in for the day, introduced me to other Pokemon Go players on campus, and told me all about the island and the Pokemon Go community. All right, this is this is the spot to start. This looks amazing. Um, community Day just started. That's perfect. This is not where I expected to be playing Community Day. <laughs> I'm in a lecture hall and I'm still shinyless. The school is easily the best place on the island to play Pokemon Go, and Ali actually played a big part in making it that way. Well, I don't really know all, all about like um, cells and stuff like that, but I know like there's like dark green patches that represent parks, and we don't really have that anywhere else on the island. And so I noticed the soccer field is like a really small dark green patch, so I thought maybe if I put like a Pokestop on, on that spot, maybe we'd get like an EX gym, which we've never had on the island before. So I tried doing it, and the, it turned into a gym, and we got our first EX gym. So we missed Reggie Dracul, but then when Reggie Alecki came around, it, we managed to get an EX gym, and we got to catch it, which was really cool. I think we've like doubled the number of stops. We've, we've gotten like at least like seven or eight wow. on this campus. Yeah, added nice. recently. There was only like two or three gyms. Now there's like five. Yeah, we really, uh, we really did a good job, I think. Uh, Trent was telling you, you watch my videos. I do. Which was crazy to me because the analytics said that no one watches my videos, but then. I think Jesse was saying something about the internet maybe being like linked to the US. Yeah, I think it's because uh, the SGU campus uses Miami somehow to like forward its internet. Yeah. So it's not technically Grenadian internet. Yeah. So yeah. I'm not really sure exactly how it works. But yeah. I definitely watch your videos. So. I appreciate <laughs> it, dude. I mean, it worked out really well, but that would explain like the zero views. If you're on campus and the campus internet is technically not Grenada. I, yeah, it makes sense. But I'm glad I found you guys. We're glad to. Do you want to do a trade while we're for here? For sure, for sure. Nice. Let's go. Um, well, we have a lot of people that play like remotely. We have like a pretty big group chat with like 100 people or so. Yeah. But like, you know, we regularly see like 10 or 20 people, especially on like communities like this. That's when everybody kind of shows up. I asked if they'd ever met any local Grenadians who play Pokemon Go. Yeah, actually, oh. uh, the yeah the guy who works for Carib with the Carib. Yeah, 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 yeah. I forgot his name. <laughs> there was yeah, the so guy, we ran the guy who works at um, Options, right? Options. Yeah, yeah. he yeah. plays too. Yeah. I also found there was a real estate agent friend that I had when I was in med school that he used to play as well. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There's there's a couple. Most definitely of, less than yeah. For sure. Most of the people yeah. are students, the students from yeah. America or Canada. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. and okay. we all we all bump into each other on these community days like yeah. today. <laughs> For sure. We play together. There was a lot of people when it was the EX raid too. I think that was even more than the community day. We had like yeah. two full lobbies or something, which is like the most we've ever had. Yeah, that yeah. was that was fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that was cool. Oh, I forgot to ask the most important question. How many shinies did we all end up with? Oh, oh. 16. 16. Oh, I got 14. Oh, I beat you! I got, <laughs> I got 14 also. Seven. Seven! Oh, I won! <laughs> so, it turns out there is a Pokemon Go community in Grenada, and at least one person watches my videos. I spent the rest of my trip doing all the things they recommended to me, but I'll tell you about that in the next video.